Okay, today we're going to demonstrate exchange sort where the data is stored inside of a queue. Since exchange sort is a uh, comparison based sort between two items and we can't compare two items while they're inside of the queue, we're going to need a couple of extra objects, X and Y. And we're going to use the comparison operator less than or equal to. And we're also going to need a secondary queue down here. We're going to need a loop to process all the items that are in the queue. Before we start that loop, we're going to need to take one item out. You can call this uh, something similar to priming the pump back in the old days. We're going to dequeue this first item out of the queue and we're going to stick it into uh, X, object X. Then we will start our loop and in this case we've got six items left in our loop so we can start a for loop. We'll start our loop and we'll dequeue an item out of the original queue and we'll stick it into Y. And then we do this test. If what's in X is less than or equal to what's in Y, then what we're going to do is we're going to do a swap between the two items or an exchange and that's where the exchange sort gets its name. And then once we got them exchanged, we'll then take the object that's in Y and we're going to enqueue it onto our secondary queue. This is pass number two. We dequeue from the front of the original queue. Compare is x less than or equal to y. It's not, so we enqueue. Third pass, dequeue from the front of the original queue is x less than or equal to y. It is. Do the exchange and now enqueue what's in y into the secondary Q. DQ, compare, exchange, and NQ. What you'll notice is, is always the larger item stays out into X and the smaller items are getting moved to the secondary Q. So when we get done, the largest item is going to be in X and we will then put that at the back of the Q. You'll see in just a moment. So we DQ, compare, NQ. DQ, compare, X is not less than or equal to Y, so we just NQ, Y. And now we've emptied out the original Q, and our for loop is terminated. At this point, we have one item left outside of the Q, and it's X, and we want to take that and NQ it onto the back of the secondary Q. At this point, the for loop has processed all the items in the original Q and moved them to the secondary Q. And the largest item, which was originally in this area, the original queue, has made its way to the end of the secondary queue. Uh, or it's also known as bubbled its way down to the end. This sort is also known as bubble sort, and this is where it gets its second name, bubble sort, in that the largest item now has bubbled to the far end. What we'll do at this point is we'll swap the secondary queue with the original queue and we'll get ready to make another pass.